Hello, good afternoon. This is a mid market European uh, analysis for the uh, Monday, 25th of uh, January 2016. This video is being brought to you courtesy of CFDs.com. Be sure to visit the website and certainly explore the services and products on offer. A uh, leading uh, spread betting and CFD brokerage, uh, you can qualify for up to a 25% cash bonus offer. Alternatively, visit the educational site, which is www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more. Okay, uh, European market analysis. Let's see where we stand. Now, in terms of the actual moves overnight, we've had the uh, Shanghai, the Hang Seng, and the Nikkei higher by almost 1% each. Okay, the European markets this morning are... Trading more or less flat, uh, it did actually open higher, but actually lost ground, and that's due to numerous uh, reasons. Now, number one, uh, the first reason is the fact that we had weaker uh, Japanese data, imports and exports, certainly weaker, and that hurt sentiment to a large extent. Also, we had a report with regards to the lack of stimulus talk or lack of follow-through from the BOJ in terms of stimulus. Alternatively, the, uh, the actual uh, governor was actually talking up the economy as opposed to potential uh, talk of um, lagging inflation expectations etc etc so <clears throat> that certainly is a factor uh, the other factor is the fact that uh, euro which i did explain in my uh, weekend analysis that we would see weakness earlier on and that's primarily due to the fact that the euro usd <clears throat> and i did give you two reasons the first one the euro usd holding that 1.08 region which we still are if i zoom into the 60 minute chart you'll see that we've held that double bottom and obviously bounced so it's about the 1.08, 1.0790 region on the euro USD. Now, if that holds, obviously, then that bodes, uh, bodes uh, negative. Well, it certainly uh, indicates negative as well for the markets itself. Obviously, we've had the blizzard as well in the US, which, again, is supposed to hurt US growth. I think the latest report that I'm reading in terms of hurting the growth, it, it certainly is quite substantial. So given the fact that the East Coast is at a standstill, and we all know the repercussions of that. So that certainly needs to be factored into the US markets, not European though. But it has a negative impact regardless, okay? Now we've had German data out this morning, IFO business climate, current assessment expectations, all it's certainly all coming out very weak. Uh, Italian uh, retail sales, industrial data, etc. orders as well. Uh, industrial orders actually did come out better than expected. Um, but the rest of the industrial sales negative and uh, retail sales certainly missed expectations quite substantially. Now, German Buber, the monthly report from Mr. Well, basically the think tank Buber, basically is indicating that Germany still remains strong, and uh, certainly is weathering the storm. Storm, domestically speaking. Now, UK data certainly came out weaker. The CB industrial trends actually came in at minus 15. Expectation was minus 10. Although, having said that, investment certainly seems to be on the rise. Okay, so uh, it might curb, but basically, despite concerns that firms might curb spending. This is a report from Reuters, uh, ahead of Britain's planned referendum on its European Union membership. The Confederation of British Industries survey showed the investment intentions of manufacturers were actually rising. So that certainly is positive. OK, so certainly a positive factor there. Now, uh, the additional uh, economic data, that's certainly weak. Uh, again, like I said, it's about German data, Japanese data, UK data, all certainly coming out weak uh, in terms of uh, the Davos meeting. Certainly not exactly bullish China. AG Bank scandal overnight, so again, that certainly will hurt sentiment today. And uh, it certainly seems that the QE or Draghi put is in full steam uh, only if the uh, euro can break that 1.08 level. And the bonds, which if I bring up the chart, the euro bond, <clears throat> as you can see here on the daily chart, we are now into that resistance zone at 161, 162. Uh, if we fail to move higher from there, then obviously that indicates, say, uh, given the fact that Eurobond actually does have a H&S formation as well, so bear that in mind. And that certainly doesn't bode well for European equities to a large uh, extent. Again, Mr. Draghi is speaking today, so certainly take that into consideration as well. Uh, the markets certainly have weathered the storm quite substantially, well, pretty well in term, given the fact that uh, you had weaker, UK, weaker German data, a lack of talk of stimulus from the BOJ, weaker Japan, Japanese imports and exports, uh, weaker UK data. It certainly has weathered the storm, given the fact that QE put certainly is in, entrenched in this market. Now, let's have a look at the technical perspective now, given the fact that we've covered fundamentals. The daily chart of the euro stock still remains bullish, given the fact that we've broken out of the falling contracting wedge. We have an unfilled gap to, to, to close at 3.070, and then obviously 3.140 is previous support equals resistance. 
Again, it's a QE trade. QE trade trumps all bearish uh, economic data. You have a bull flag on the 60 minutes. You have an inverted head and shoulders formation. So we certainly remain in full steam ahead in terms of hitting that target. Okay, so bear that in mind. S&P Europe 350, again, is has broken out the downtrend or bearish trend line. And you are looking at a potential thrust higher. We're just consolidating for now before the next move. Okay, looking at the French CAC, bring up the French CAC now. Again, we have put in a bearish engulfing candle this morning and we are consolidating within that red candle. So certainly cause for concern, although the 10 minutes certainly is holding. Um, we haven't taken out the high from Friday, which is a concern, and we are putting in a lower high at present with an unfill gap below. But given the fact that Mr. Draghi is talking today, given the fact that uh, the QE is firmly entrenched into the market, we are looking at higher prices with a potential of a gap being filled at 4.390 and 4.480. We still remain in that bearish channel, but we are looking to potentially break out again due to the QE trade. Okay, uh, The FTSE 100 now, bring up the FTSE. The FTSE is still holding that 5.915 level. It's all dependent upon oil. So if I bring up the chart of Brent, let's bring up a chart of Brent oil. Bear with me. There we go. Brent crude, sorry. Okay, so Brent crude in the four hour chart is a bearish engulfing candle. So we certainly held that resistance on the daily chart. As you can see, that upper channel resistance is holding, and all eyes will be on there. The 10 minute chart uh, is certainly has uh, not put in a lower low as of yet, has put in a higher low, and is certainly consolidating around this $31 region. So it's all about China, it's not all about oil, and they are the two variables that will dictate the market's next direction. Okay. Uh, in terms of the German DAX, uh, we again, we are consolidating around this level at 9760. So all eyes will be on there. The 60 minute chart is consolidating too. The next resistance zone seems to be at 9960. Okay, I think that's a market wrap. Uh, with regards to the German DAX, all eyes on this support zone at 9700. If that cracks, then the market will crack and you are looking at lower prices. Again, on the upside, the unfilled gap remains uh, and uh, that certainly will... Uh, be the main attraction from my perspective, the 979960, and then obviously uh, 10 to 20. So they are the two zones that we will watch very, very closely. Uh, it's all about the US markets now. Uh, they will come on board and they will dictate the, the direction and sentiment in the markets. They will have to react to the weak economic data out overnight from Europe and, uh, J and Japan, and obviously the reaction in the, US and the Asian markets as well. But bear in mind the blizzard and the uh, uh, cost of to, to economic growth will be the main driving factor. Okay, I think that's a market wrap. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.